Thank you. Good evening. I've been privileged to be involved with HRC since 1999, of which the last 10 or so years were as a member of HRC's national boards. So it is my honor to recognize someone who's been a true leader, not only within the HRC volunteer and board ranks, but within our community at large. Britt Corman and I share the common hometown of Kingwood out in the Houston suburbs. <laughs> but I didn't get to know Britt until about 10 years ago. At that time, she was already a force within the LGBT community and had turned her attention to the work of HRC. We sat over a coffee and discussed how she could get more involved, and even then, she was intent on making a difference. We charted out a path for leadership within the Houston Steering Committee and eventually the HRC National Board of Directors. Britt is one of the most talented, focused people I have ever met. She sets goals, meets them, then beats them ahead of schedule. She has broken multiple records for membership growth and fundraising, but she's also managed to motivate and inspire a multitude of donors and volunteers to get involved in their own capacity as well. I'm very proud of the work that Britt has done on behalf of our community. I'm honored to have worked with her and even more so to call her my friend. So it is with great pleasure that I call Britt up to the podium to recognize her leadership and present the 2017 HRC Leadership Award. Wow, I get to follow Martha Plimpton and Monica. That is not fun. Um, thank you. Uh, it's truly an honor and a privilege to receive this award from an organization that has given me so much. Uh, it's actually a little hard to process. Uh, it means a lot, considering my parents and brother are here to share it with me tonight. Ooh, not allowed to cry. All right, uh, I have the privilege of standing here on this stage as an out bisexual woman. I get to live my life authentically in every aspect of my day in my hometown of Houston, Texas. And that's not because of any work that I've done. It's because of organizations like HRC and the people behind them, some whose names I know and some whose names I'll never know. Uh, organizations that fought for decades before I was even in the picture. And it's with thanks to them that I can live my life authentically. I'm gonna date myself a bit, but I was born in 1982. Yes, I know, I know, I know. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's actually two years after the Human Rights Campaign was actually founded. It's the same year that GRID was renamed AIDS that lived through it in New York and around the country. I was 16 years old when Matthew Shepard was killed in Laramie, Wyoming. And I was a freshman at the United States Air Force Academy during the heart of Don't Ask, Don't Tell when I realized that I was gay and that because I was different, my country didn't want me to serve, at least not as my authentic self. For those of us in this room, we know that feeling all too well. We know that when you hide part of yourself, you hide all of yourself. And Leanne Rhymes said that to us last weekend in Nashville, so we'll say thank you to her. <laughs> and we know that when you hide part of yourself and all of yourself, it's impossible to thrive. So what do we do when we're told that we're less? That we aren't equal because of who we love? We fight, and that's what I chose to do. I volunteered for this organization since I moved back to Houston about a decade ago. And in that time frame, we've seen sweeping changes and the acceptance of our community. Anise Parker was elected the first openly gay mayor of Houston. The Matthew Shepard and James Bird Hate Crime Prevention Act was passed, and I got to serve on the board of directors with his mom, Judy. Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed. 
Barack Obama, our president still, became the first president to support same-sex marriage. And Tammy Baldwin was elected as the first openly lesbian U.S. senator. The Windsor Perry Obergefell, thank you to my friend Jim, who is here. Uh, does they, those decisions made sweeping changes to marriage equality across the country. And for those Aggies in the room, Texas A&M just elected their first openly gay student body president, which Rick Perry seems to be very scared about. Um, but to me, a sign is just last week, a lot of people don't know, an out lesbian was actually named the Commandant of Cadets at the United States Air Force Academy. This organization, an army of volunteers and staff, have improved and continue to improve the lives of the lived experiences of the LGBT community. And I'm forever grateful and privileged to even play a small part. Um, the thing I'm the most grateful to this organization, though, is a little bit more personal. One of my best friends once told me that friends are the family you choose. And this organization has given me some of the best family I could ever ask for. In the last decade, we've spent late nights planning, hours and hours on conference calls. We drank wine and made seating charts. I didn't do your seating tonight, don't blame me. Uh, we've laughed together, we've cried together, especially during the fight for Hero and since the election of you know who last November. Um, but when you fight next to and with people for the right to be equal, for the right to be yourself, there's a bond that you just can't describe. So to my HRC family, you know who you are. There's a lot of you in here, and I wish I could thank every single one of you. Thank you. My life is forever better because of each of you. And to my best friend, my wife, Erin. I love you. I wouldn't be up here without you. You taught me the most important lesson of all. And that's what it really means to be a volunteer. It's and the value of being one. It's to give of yourself, but not for yourself. And to never forget that we in this room are the privileged ones. And we have to fight for those that are unable to fight for themselves. Thank you.